What's up guys, my name is Ivan Valdovinos and on this channel I provide tips, tricks, advice and strategies for your graduate school applications. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Graduate school application season is underway. So today, I wanted to share with you a brief outline for your statement of purpose. So the first paragraph is obviously the introduction. A lot of grad school gurus say that you need to start off with an ca uh, eye-catching introduction, an eye-catching sentence. But honestly, I think what you should do is start off with your career goal. So state, my career goal is because you want to make sure that the grad school committee knows right away what your mission and vision is for grad school and beyond. So start off your introduction sentence by explaining to the committee what is your career goal, what is your graduate school goal, and a brief sentence or two about how that PhD program or master's program is going to help you gain the skill sets to get you to that career goal. So in summary, the introductory, sen the introductory paragraph should be focused on your career goals and why you want to go to graduate school. So for example, I would put something like, my career goal is to become a research-driven education reformer in order for me to be able to produce, develop policies and practices for rural students in Washington State. And then I would explain a little bit about uh, my other, my graduate school goals, my other goals, and be more specific. And then I would say something like, the PhD program at the University of California, San Diego, will best equip me with the theoretical knowledge and practical theoretical knowledge, practical experience, and research training in order for me to be able to become an agent of change to transform educational systems and policies for my community. Something along those lines. The next paragraph is where you actually get into the question that they normally ask you, what led you to graduate school or what led you to your research interest? So this could be um, written in, in a number of ways, but the one way that I usually go about it um, myself is I talk about a transformative experience that I had that has led me to look at the issues that I like to look at. So for example, I'll speak about my culture or my location. So um, a lot of my work is around my background. So I am Latino, Mexican, I come from a low income background, I'm first generation, my parents are immigrants to the United States, my parents are also um, seasonal migrant farm workers, I also um, live in a rural community. So I use my identities to describe myself and talk about the issues that I have seen and experienced in obviously education and educational systems in the United States. And that's my second paragraph, talking about who I am, but very brief. I wouldn't say tell your whole life story, pick one transformative experience that has led you to research what you want to research or has led you to um, want to go to grad school. So I usually talked about my experience as a first generation low income Latino male and how those identities um, have led me to face challenges in the K through 12 system, higher education, access, equity, things like that, because that's my, my mission and vision. So at the beginning I stated, here's my career goal. So my first paragraph is talking about myself, giving it a little bit of insight of who I am in one brief paragraph and using that to tie in my vision and mission of college access and equity for Latino males in higher education. The third paragraph should be dedicated for you to talk about your research interests. So what are your research interests and how do you how do you plan to go about exploring those interests and executing a project? Especially if you are applying for the PhD and you want to get into a PhD program, you want to give the committee an idea of what you potentially want to research for your dissertation. Obviously, they know that this could change as you go through coursework, as you evolve as a researcher, as, a, as an academic in the program. But you want to give them a glimpse, a little taste of what you might want to research because this, is, this also helps them decide who can be your potential faculty mentor. And also in this paragraph, you want to describe who's going to help you get to that goal. So um, name some faculty that do similar research as you want to do um, and ask and pretty much ask them in this little paragraph that they show that, that you want them to be your mentor. So you want to describe things like how are you prepared for graduate school? What research have you um, done or 
what past experiences that has led you to um, be able to conduct rigorous research. So usually I describe my experience with this program I was in called the Ronald D. McNair Achievement Program where I conducted a research study on family engagement. I also describe my other research study as an undergraduate student where I talked about Latino males in higher education. And depending on what route I wanna take, I have to choose between one or the other. So usually I stick with the uh, Latino males in higher education because that was my focus of my SOP and also my mission to why I wanna do a PhD. And so I describe that and I talk about how, um, and I talk about it in detail. I talk about the methodologies, the outcomes, the implications, the questions I was answering, um, and any challenges that I had faced with conducting research. And and so I describe that and then I talk about how that has led me to my current research question. So based on that research study, I talk about the gaps that I saw in the work that I did that I couldn't answer through that project and how I want my dissertation to build on that project. So make sure that you talk about it in that way. Talk about ways in which you can build off the unknown, the gaps in literature, the gaps in your own work and talk about that as your dissertation topic. So then when, when you talk about dissertation topic, you want to describe in detail what methodology do you want to do interviews do you want to um, use a data set that already exists do you want to create your own questionnaire you create your own um, you know create your own your own instrument um, do you want to be a qualitative researcher do you want to be a quantitative researcher do you want to use certain um, theories to inform your work and then talk about like what do you hope to have as implications like what do you hope that this research does for the community for the field talk about all these things in detail in this paragraph because it's going to make you look like you know what to do as a researcher and obviously if you're applying for a phd this is a research degree so they want to know that the applicants the people that they accept are people that are going to be able to execute a large study the next paragraph answers the question why this institution and why this program so you want to dig deep into their website talk to their faculty talk to their students and figure out at least three things that you want to be able to utilize as a resource when you're in the program so obviously the the biggest obvious one is faculty right so you're going to want to um, talk about one to three faculty that fit your research interests and career goals and mention them in your statement of purpose in this paragraph talk about how their research their background their experience is going to help you build similar skill sets to do a certain job to get to your career goal your research goal your graduate school goals whatever it is so make sure that you name at least one to three faculty that you potentially want to be matched up with so they can be your mentor you also want to include some of the coursework that you might want to take so what coursework do they offer that helps you with your with your dissertation with your research studies with your research project with your interests talk about those in depth and name drop so say exactly what the title is and how those courses will help you get to your goals you also want to mention things like if it's cohort based how is like if that's something that you value talk about that in this paragraph talk about how the cohort model is going to help you build the networks that you might need in the future but also get you through a dissertation because you need support if they have a certain lab or a certain like instrument or some type of technology that they only have at that program talk about it in this paragraph because it's going to help them know that you need to be there to be able to utilize this resource to be able to conduct your groundbreaking research mention things like practical experiences if they have research centers talk about those if if they have let's say something in the community that you want to utilize talk about that so go into depth be detailed because it's going to show the community that you did your homework and that you actually want to go to that program because you've done your homework you've done um, research that's in depth that you know what it entails to be a student in that program in that community at that institution finally the last paragraph is your conclusion so what do you include in your conclusion so you want to make sure you reiterate your career goals and your passion and vision you also want to include why you want to go to this program again you want to state that because of your background because of your experiences um, you are a good match for this program for this institution so that's what you want to do at the end you want to just give them a, a, a you want to reiterate again here's how i'm qualified to be in your program and I need to be in your program at this time next year. 
All right, guys, so that concludes my video on this brief outline of a statement of purpose. I hope that this video really helps you out as you craft your statement of purpose for graduate school. Like I mentioned earlier, the, the graduate school application process is underway, and the statement of purpose is usually one of the most challenging parts about the graduate school process. So I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. Um, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.